video. Welcome to your August 2017 general focus tarot reading. It's Raina here. So I started to do your reading yesterday and something happened with noise and I just scooped up the cards uh, absentmindedly and didn't even um, leave them on the table so I could continue the reading after the noise went away. So I'm, um, that's just full disclosure. I had just started to put down the cards. So Obviously, I have to do this over. Um, I'm also very excited to announce that I have a new feature, and this is going to be on Vimeo, and it's kind of a companion piece to the free love readings that I do on YouTube. And uh, this one is about being ready for my soulmate, and what do I need to do? And also looking at what type of person will this person B and where will I meet them and things like that. So it in, involves Oracle cards, which I don't use in my YouTube readings. And so if you're interested in that, I will provide a link below this video and you can go to Vimeo to check it out. Otherwise, let me um, continue to shuffle these cards. I'm starting with the sign of uh, Leo because I feel like you guys have the momentum at this time. Okay. Well, in some cases, I always say, even with these general readings, that it seems like I'm always being drawn back to personal relationships because I do feel that for some people this central character may be um, I think it, it could be a facet of you though because it may be that you left a, a marriage maybe a long-term marriage and now you're more like this knight of wands that you have this sense of freedom and you're kind of reveling in that freedom It, it can be, you know, I was thinking about it, you know, I shouldn't have uh, looked at it just one way. Maybe this is a defense mechanism. Maybe, because um, I was going to say, uh, the death card can be, it doesn't mean that you ended a relationship. It could mean that someone left you. And so instead of mourning the loss, you're just having one night stands is that possible for some people and doing so to prove your desirability the knight of wands is very unstable because it's a very fiery energy and it can indicate uh, sexually being out of control however this could be a positive facet of you Fire is freedom. Fire is individuality, creativity. You may, uh, let's say you were in a job. Maybe the job ended. Death can be like the, the job ending and you, you may not have been the instigator. And now it's like you have a new lease on life. That could be what it is too. So, um we have here for the present time the five of swords this can be gossip around you uh intrigue uh, there could be some kind of slanderous uh, behavior people talking smack about you or even deception of some sort 
And you see there's several people in the background. I think of frenemies, but it could be family members. I, do they have a, a word that means family enemies? Families? who claim to, to, to care about you, but meanwhile, they're talking about you. If they're talking about you, they probably are envious, and they're envious of your freedom. Um, you have here, as the higher message, the Four of Pentacles. So it could be saying, keep a hold of your finances, and it's not because you don't have the money or you're not going to... Uh, if you're if you're in between jobs that you're not going to be working again, I think a lot of Leos are going to actually be doing very well. But it's just that there may be people around you, and there may have already this may have already happened where they are trying to uh, take you for a ride financially. And it's also about you know this is your freedom, your ticket to freedom, and the more that you can. Make sure that you are living um, you're living according to your lifestyle, and maybe like um, you haven't adjusted if you're in between jobs, the more you freedom you have to possibly do your own thing if that's something that has appealed to you, or to maybe just have that time off to be able to breathe. Um, but definitely things related to launching. Uh, I'm recording this before the first new moon, and that's actually an even better time because the the uh, solar eclipse in your sign is going to be during a Mercury retrograde. But the one in July, July 23rd, is not, you know, it's free and clear for that. So if you're watching before that date, you might want to launch earlier rather than later if you are prepared. If not, you can, you know, you may have to get all your ducks in a row. And uh, having a uh, modest lifestyle in the meantime can afford you that. It's also, as a spiritual message, asking you not to be too material-minded because that could lead you into accepting a job position that really isn't you. And that you're doing because you want the money, but not because you have the passion for what you're doing. Remember, as a fire sign, passion is everything. If I were talking to a Virgo, it wouldn't necessarily be the case. They, they might be more uh, passionate about pragmatism. <laughs> so, what crosses you is the Magician card. And this is the card of launching, of um, self-empowerment. This can be in the challenge position because of doubt creeping in. Can I do it? Do I have what it takes? One of the, th the features of the magician, if you see his table, he has, it's funny, he's got a pentacles there too. I think he has all of the elements the cup is supposed to represent. I don't know. The oh, there's a sword. Now he's got a rose. I don't know if that is supposed to be fire. <laughs> uh, but um, he's, got, he's got his what he needs. Now, this is an important thing because a lot of times people will say, I can't, I can't start such and such because I don't have the funds or I don't have the equipment. And sometimes you would be amazed at what you can start with very little. Uh, you can get free websites. You, you know, there's just, if you're resourceful, if you're not, and, and you don't have to start at the top. Sometimes Leo might think that. And that's that fire being um, too expansive sometimes, out of control expansive. So think more like a Virgo and start small if you're trying to do something. And, you know, it's like dipping your toe in the water. You don't have to come in and invest and do all this stuff in large quantities, but you can at least get the ball rolling. And as, speaking of getting the ball rolling, the Ace of Swords is about doing just that. I mean, this is a very decisive card. This is a card of victory, too. 
I remember reading in some book it said coming from evil circumstances. I don't know if I read that correctly. Now, um, evil is obviously overblown, but if, you know, it's right under the death card. So an example would be, let's say somebody dies, you get an inheritance, and that gives you the go-ahead to be able to take off six months and create a business that you've always wanted to do that, you know, is out of the rat race, okay? Um, it might have been a sad experience to lose a loved one, but on the other hand, it enabled you to do something that you've wanted to do. And uh, a divorce, a divorce may thrust you into a different kind of a lifestyle, a different kind of life. And that could be very jarring, but there are some really great things that it does give you and gives you a new start where you are, you know, this is a card of mental clarity. You know, if you've been dealing with somebody who is dishonest, that can really wear on a person to hear somebody talk and not know if they're telling the truth or not on a consistent basis. So um, this is really, I think, a good reading overall because even the magician, you can remedy that. You can become um, that self-empowered person. It may take you just shifting your mindset. Maybe you just were fixed as a fixed sign, fixated on one outcome and you weren't willing to consider alternatives. And now you're ready to make a mental break from a situation that may have dis distressed you, including career matters, you know. Um, that lure of money can, you know, the lure of money can get people stuck and that can backfire. So it's really great if you're able to embrace your freedom. And the outcome is the Six of Swords. I always say this is about choosing peace. Um, this could be physical relocation, by the way. Uh, so again, there are swords in this in this uh, reading. So your opposite sign, I always call the opposite sign the usual suspect, is Aquarius, Leo. So perhaps you're getting away from a an Aquarius person, maybe they have been uh, dishonest or talking smack about you. Or Gemini, um, another, there's three air signs connected to swords. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So that could be something. Of course, this is a card of beginnings. So maybe a beginnings with an, an air sign. Maybe you're like gravitating towards a Libran person and finding that they offer you a sense of peace. Who knows? It's a general reading. So in any case, I hope that you enjoyed this, Leo, and I wish you all the best in a very eventful month of August. By the way, um, speaking of the death card, there is a, uh, that's why I, I should have uh, mentioned this, there's a lunar eclipse in August, on August 7th, in Aquarius, your opposite sign, because because lunar eclipses are full moons and they're always opposed to sun. So that's your seventh house, you know, on the wheel. So that could be mar marital issues that just, you know, it, it doesn't have to be on that exact date, though, but it could be like endings coming through, maybe very suddenly and uh this is especially uh, going to be a surprise for those people who have been married many years. Maybe you're married many years and the relationship was just not good. And then all of a sudden, poof, it's over with. But that, again, that is not necessarily a bad thing at all. So embrace your freedom and enjoy um, the month. If you'd like a personal reading, 
please click on the link below. Otherwise, enjoy the change. Bye.